Uh, hi everyone, this is uh, this is Ali, and I'm Ed. Welcome to the Ed and Ali show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is our first episode, so uh, we're gonna play it by ear a little bit and see what we can do. But the whole idea is really bringing um, what we are doing in the labs and giving you some updates on you know the latest and greatest of the product features. Some of the stuff you're going to see, uh, they've been released. They're in various stages of typically EA or sometimes GA. We just want to highlight them further. And we may also sh show you some sneak peeks of things that uh, haven't seen the light of the day or some stuff that are around the product and kind of cool things that the team is building um, on top of the platform, stuff like that. But we're going to keep it uh, light and casual and fun and show you some demos and give you some uh, variable updates to the platform. And, and that's it. Uh, I think, Ed, anything you want to add? Uh, no, not really. I mean, just the idea is to keep it casual. So yeah, it's just sort of a uh, bit of a preview on my side, but uh, yeah, it'll be, should be fun. So I mean, just to introduce maybe ourselves a little bit more though. Um, so I'm okay. the head of the, the core products. Uh, so these are all the kind of old school SOLIS products like the broker, our APIs, some of our connectors, that kind of thing. And Ali? Yeah, and I'm head of uh, Solace Cloud. I work closely with Ed, and we basically provide all the cloud services. Uh, together, we build a platform, and um, we are here to have fun and show you some of the latest and greatest. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it. Give us some feedback, and uh, we'll bring you more goodies and show you some interesting stuff. For those of you who are relatively new, this is your first interaction with Solace or EDA. We, we thought we would set some context so that um, you know what we're talking about. Uh, so Solace is all about EDA, event-driven architecture. Um, and so EDA is really taking off. Uh, if you go back many years in uh, financial markets, trading, Events always existed. A lot of technologies and apps there were built um, fundamentally using EDA. But more recently, we are seeing EDA in more and more verticals, and it's really taking off. Now, I dare to say, if you're building a cloud app and EDA and events are not a fundamental part of your architecture, your ar architecture probably has a bug because at some point, not having events and not having these event brokers to act as shock absorbers and providing those resiliency in your architecture is gonna come and haunt you. Uh, so examples of events, you know, you, uh, you, you know, a lot of us started buying groceries online, especially in the past couple of years. You go online, you put your order in, and you know, as soon as you kind of finish your order, um, that's an event. It's an event that can be fired to many different targets, including inventory. Uh, it gets your order to the store to prepare your order, kind of uh, gets your transaction done, all that kind of stuff. So these, uh, you know, publish publishing of events really help you finish your grocery purchase and kind of all the mechanics underneath that. But at the same time, you know, if you think about a grocery store, they bring in all kinds of um, stuff to the store and they have a huge supply chain. As an example, one of our customers was talking about this uh, great uh, EDA use case. Uh, they use IoT and events to track the temperature of the trucks when they transfer strawberries from point A to point B to in order to increase the shelf life of the strawberries. So, uh, the use case of EDA goes from you know online transactions all the way down to IoT and tracking the life shelf of strawberries, if you will. So lots of interesting topics to talk about there, but that's not why we are here today. Our goal in life as Solace is really using EDA to enable uh, real-time use cases for our customers. And in order to do that, we have this amazing EDA platform. The, the core of this platform is what we call Event Mesh. 
And if you event mesh is really an interconnected internet of event brokers. Uh, it's hybrid. It runs on any cloud provider, um, also on prem, on Kubernetes, or various type of platforms. And it really provides you, the developers and architect, this abstraction layer that you don't really have to worry about. You know, from an application point of view, you just uh, call an API, you publish your events, and on the other end, you subscribe to a topic, which is really a string, and you receive all these events. And you, as a developer and architect, really just worry about your application logic and the smarts of the event mesh will take care of routing the events from point A, let's say in a specific cloud provider, all the way to point B, which could be somewhere on-prem in your data center. And really abstracting all those complexities all out of your life really simplifies your life in, in a great way. Now, as you can imagine, with that kind of really significant capability, you can bring all your different enterprise apps together. To do that, we have all kinds of connectors that help you plug in your different enterprise applications into this event mesh, one of which we'll talk about today, our Kafka connector. And we'll go deeper into that. But you know, any good developer and architect knows that if, if you have a system and if it's really too abstract and it really hides everything and it's all black box, at some point you want to kind of op open it up and start configuring it and fine tuning it. Otherwise you get it yourself into trouble, right? So that, that's what we give you with our single pane of glass. We have various capabilities, including mission control or pops up club, uh, pops up plus manager, as well as insights, which helps you to configure the mesh, the broker, and also take care of monitoring and observability aspects that are essential and table stakes in any, any production environment, of course. So you have the event mesh, you have your platform, you cannot configure it. But of course, as soon as you have all these different apps and inter interdependencies, you now want to be able to manage those and understand the relationship between the different apps. And in absence of a better word, have a blueprint of your architecture, really. As an architect, as a developer, you want to be able to discover all the events that are out there, all, all the event APIs that are out there, uh, and also make sure that if you're changing a schema or you're changing an event, you're not breaking someone else's app and kind of manage all of that, those complexities. And you know the complexities could be real and significant, especially in a large enterprise with thousands of events. Uh, so that's kind of an introduction to what we do and our platform. Uh, let me double click on event portal though, which is one of the main topics I want to get into today. We launched event portal. It's kind of the, the first events management tool of its kind. We were first to the market. And what it provides is design, discovery, catalog, and visualization of your architecture. Um, you know, when you do architect your um, EDA or any sort of a software application, you typically use, you know, your typical architectural tools, whether it's Visio or Confluence, you know, some people use spreadsheets to kind of track what's happening. With Event Portal, you can easily manage those relationships, but also link them back to runtime. Because, you know, as you know, as, as a great developer and architect out there, as soon as you write a document, day two, that document is stale. So how do you keep, keep that up to date? By linking it back to the runtime environment, auditing your, your runtime environment, and make sure that these are in sync, and you can kind of go back and forth between the two of them. So that's kind of the vision of Event Portal. Going first to the market, though, we started getting some feedback from our customers. And so we started working on a major set of capabilities uh, related to lifecycle management. And uh, that is our second generation of Event Portal, which is now in beta, and you'll see a demo of that today. So with, with the second generation of Event Portal, we, I would say we have three major new capabilities. 
role-based access control so that at the uh, application level you can decide who has access to what and what kind of level of access they have i mean version control was uh, was a gap in our v1 definitely you know as you know when you have apis when you have events you want to version them you want to make sure that you support backwards compatibility you know which app uses which version of the schemas and events and kind of understand all these complexities and relationships and also when you get to event apis and kind of the events you want to kind of mark them as whether they're released or if you want to deprecate one you kind of be able to mark that and be a little bit more official about it especially in an enterprise context and then of course you know we all have our software development life cycles you know you take your code from dev environment to staging to production environment and you kind of want to know in which of these environments, which version of these um, schemas and events and apps exist. So this whole lifecycle management umbrella provides all these capabilities, bring them together in a seamless experience, uh, both visual and textual, which uh, you know we'll give you a demo today. So with that, uh, you're gonna go to a demo which was done by our director of engineering kevin and he's gonna show some of the latest and greatest to you guys uh so here we are back with the game co organization and we're gonna be showing off three features from event portal designing our event-driven architecture and the improvements we made there around applications and consumers, also the graph visualization. Uh, we're going to be sharing our events with our internal and external customers through Event API products. And we're gonna be showing off the beginnings of what we have coming for audit, import, data collection, all that being done through the runtime agent. So I'll be setting up a runtime agent that is going to collect and audit the data on our event brokers to make sure what we provision from our event API products is all in alignment with our design. Uh, so I'm on a dev build of Event Portal, like Daryl mentioned, the beta is going to be official in the coming weeks. So all this functionality will be there with the release of the beta. And we'll go into the Gameco uh, retail application domain. So I've already provisioned a bunch of applications for my event-driven architecture for my retail use case. I have a point to purchase app that runs in the store, um, some HR software. And today what we're gonna do is create a new app for a new uh, loyalty rewards program that we wanna be launching. So go ahead and create a new application. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to jump to the consumers tab and we're going to add a consumer because for loyalty rewards, we need to consume events around uh, customer purchases because as they purchase things, we give them better rewards. So I'm going to create a new consumer, which represents a queue on an event broker. So we're going to call it the customer purchase queue. It is a solace event queue. And to attract the correct events to that queue, we need to create a subscription. Um, so I want to find the events that I want to bring into the queue. So I'll hit the find events. I want this customer action, um, which is the uh, customer purchase event. So by selecting that event, we pre-populated the subscription based on that event's topic address. We've substituted the variable levels of the topic address with wildcard characters. And down below here, what we're seeing is a preview of the events that would be attracted if this was our subscription. Um, so this is kind of updated live. So if I was to just change the subscription to, to the everything subscription, you can see I attract all events. And these are the events that are specifically being published to the event mesh that I have selected here. So if I had many event meshes, they have different events being published, you'd see different lists of what gets attracted through these subscriptions. Let me just go back and because I only want purchase events, I'm going to expand this customer action, take a look at its topic address. So I don't want all of the actions from this variable level of the topic address. I can see that this is enumeration and I want the purchase action, which I can see is value two. So I'm just going to change the star to a two. Um, so I'm still attracting this event. Everything's good. I add the subscription to my queue. I can go ahead and save this application. 
And next, what I'm going to do is deploy the application to my production event mesh, um, the one I have running in the US. So I'll go ahead and add that. And if I jump over to the runtime manager, we can now visualize my mesh in the graphical format again. Uh, so all of the apps and events on the graph are lifted, listed on the left. As I select things in the graph, it uh, selects it in the list. We have all the contextual menus, the ability to pan around, zoom in and out. Um, and we can see here's my loyalty rewards program app that I added. Uh, the dotted lines represent the different lifecycle states. So the apps with dotted lines are still in a draft state while the solid um, colors represent released items and then we have the names and the the versions of each of these items that we have in our EGA. So now that I have an event driven architecture, I have events flowing through my mesh. I want to give my partners access to them, different internal and external customers. And the way I do that is using the event API products. So to start with event API products, I first create an event API, which is a collection of events. So I've already pre-created an event API. Um, this represents the different retail store actions that people would want to start consuming. So I've collected those events, let um, and when that consumes this API, I can subscribe these or subscribe for these. Uh, so the next step is to create the event API product, which takes a collection of event APIs and turns it into this product that I can begin sharing. So I'm gonna call this my retail API product. Um, I'll set this version to 1.0. Maybe I'll just override and give a custom version name of the demo alpha. And I'm going to select the event API that I had created my restore retail store actions. And what really makes the event API product uh, a product is the ability to define the different plans that the consumers of this product can can choose. So it's much like a cell phone plan where you can have different tiers of service uh, with my event API product, I can have these different tiers. So I'm going to create two, three plans, uh, a gold plan, which if you get the gold plan, you're going to get guaranteed messaging. So you're going to get a queue created for you in the event mesh. Uh, I can choose if I want for each event API to have a single queue or just to combine all the queues into one. So I'm going to have individual queues per event API for this guy. I'm going to give a timeout of a day and we give 50 megs of queue size if you get the gold plan. For silver, we'll do much the same, but just with reduced, uh, well, single or a single or combining all the queues for a single event API, two hour timeout and maybe one meg. And for bronze, we won't give queues. We'll just do direct messaging. So I'll save my event API product, and then I can deploy this event API product to my um, US production mess, mesh. I have to pick a specific messaging service within that mesh where I want this API product, uh, where the, this is where the consumers are going to connect to. So I've already set that up. This is a Solace Cloud service I created from the cluster manager that I called the US production gateway service. And I choose which messaging protocols um, consumers can connect via. So I'll choose SMS and I'll go ahead and deploy that. And what that triggers is a flow to deploy this event API product to an external developer portal. So I don't actually have a developer portal set up right now. So we're just gonna use our imaginations. Um, so Daryl already mentioned like different developer portals we're looking to integrate with is MuleSoft, Anypoint, Axway, Apigee. In this example, I'm integrating with uh, Backstage IO. So when my API product gets deployed, developers don't want to consume the different events from my retail retail store actions. They can uh, they can go to Backstage and they're going to see this new event API product. So they'd be able to select that they want access to this product. They'd get presented with the page where they can now select which plan they want. Um, maybe more configuration would be possible in the future. So it'd select the gold plan. And what that would trigger is the developer portal would then seek for approval from operations or architects or whoever it is responsible for for your mesh because we can't just have everyone consuming all the events and everybody signing up for these huge queues we have to 
we have to allocate the resources fairly. Once it's approved, um, the developer portal would provision the, the queue in question um, in our US production event mesh. And then an email would be sent to the developer that just signed up, letting them know that they've been approved and giving them the async API file that represents the events that they're allowed to consume and the connection details to connect to the messaging service. Uh, so jumping back to event portal, uh, the final step I want to show is in the runtime and the ability to audit what we just provisioned. We provisioned this gold queue for this user. We want to audit that what we've designed in event portal is uh, is the reality on the brokers. Um, so to do that, we need a runtime agent that we install uh, co-located with the messaging broker. And that's what I'm going to be showing today, how you set up a runtime agent in the event portal. Um, so if I jump to runtime manager to the runtime agents, I can create my first runtime agent. Runtime agents can now connect directly with event portal, uh, or you can run them without a connection to the event portal and still get all the same functionality, but we're going to connect to the event portal. I'm going to call this our US runtime agent, and we're going to add all the different messaging services that we want this agent to manage. Um, I can create a messaging service. Maybe this represents a hardware appliance or an on-premise event broker that I'm managing myself, or I can choose existing messaging services that I've already created, um, even ones I've created within the cluster manager in Solace Cloud. So that's what I have today. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my messaging service. Because it's Solus Cloud Managed, I don't have to enter all the hosts and connection details. We already know all of that. Um, so that makes it easier for me. And the final step is to create this connection file. That, and this is the configuration file that we'll be passing into the runtime agent software. So it makes it a much easier process to just download my runtime agent, whether it's through Docker or Kubernetes. I'm going to seed it this configuration file just by copying it over to that machine. And now it has everything it needs to connect both back to the event portal and to the messaging services that I'm managing with this agent. So what we'll see coming soon in Q2 is the ability to collect all the data off that runtime agent, audit it, compare it to what's in the designer, identify discrepancies and import it back into the, into the designer. And that's everything I wanted to show today. Thanks everybody. <laughs>
So what we're building right now is an embedded Kafka client into our Solus event broker, which will allow both the reception and the transmission of data between a Kafka broker and a Solus broker. And of course, that will allow for higher performance, lower latency, and uh, also giving us way more control over what the topic is and how you route that topic throughout the Solus uh, event uh, mesh. So what I wanted to show here was a demo of where we are with this. And uh, again, I'm fairly excited about this. This is what I've set up to illustrate this. So on the right-hand side, if we start here, we have two Kafka producers, and they're just going to publish two uh, into two topics on a single Kafka broker. Those two topics just have a single partition for this uh, purpose, but they don't have to only have one partition. And uh, it will then move data through to a Solace broker, and the data will end up in a, um, a web browser, actually, is the, the final location. I'm just going to quickly show the tool that I'm using for this. and. I don't know if any of you have played Valve's uh, portal game, but I built a little thing here that can transmit, these are events basically, through and one of these portals is basically a publisher to a Solace broker and the other one is a consumer. And it goes in here, pops out there. Uh, you can have multiple of these things or whatever, or you can have all kinds of events going through here. And it is just a visual way of showing how the data is moving around. So what I did for this demo was to, instead of having one of those portals publish the data to Solus, I have made messages or events from within Kafka have the same payload as one of those events. And so I can publish with uh, Kafka here, push it through the Solus broker and have it be received in the, in the uh, browser as one of those little boxes that are moving around. A few things to point out here. Uh, number one is that I have two topics, one called box small, one called box large. These are actually um, just different sizes of those little boxes that are going to move around the screen. And inside the Solace Broker, I've configured two Kafka receivers. Um, and the Kafka receiver, actually, the Kafka receiver will um, basically connect to a Kafka broker or it gives it a bootstrap address, so it might be actually spread across multiple Kafka brokers, and it will um, subscribe to a topic. And once it subscribes to a topic, it will start to receive the messages from that topic. On ingress into the Solace broker, you can configure a fairly complex translation between this event coming in and the topic associated with that event for Solace. And in this case, I just gave it the topic box slash size, which would be small or large. The key, so this is just the Kafka key that was associated with the message. And it pulls off one of the headers from the message, which is called the color. So that actually will create, you know, in, as an example, box small key is in this case, zero to three. And then it puts on the color, which will be, you know, green, blue, uh, orange, or red. And that goes into the Solace Broker. The Solace Broker can then route those messages. And one of the, the main differences between uh, Solace and Kafka is that the Solace Broker will use these topics to route to the end applications and the subscriptions that were given into the uh, broker by these end applications can wildcard different uh, uh, levels of the topic or can you know ask for more specific stuff. And so it allows you to much more fine grain select which messages you get. So if I just run over to my screen, I'll just demonstrate this. So I have just a simple little command line publisher, two publishers that are going to go into Kafka. Uh, one does box small with a box size of 20. One does uh, box large, box size of 40. I don't know if you can see that. Zoom in here. And just what the interval is between messages. So it's just going to... Zooming go really helped that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just remind me as we go along. You're you're there, you can tell me what to do. So I'll start kicking this off and uh, just put one on for to start with. Here's a another one of these things. This is subscribing to all of them. And here I'll zoom in on the two subscriptions, box large greater than just means everything that ends or starts with box and large and the box small as well. So we get everything out of this portal. And so I just did the large one. I'll start up the small one. And uh, 
for a couple of seconds. We'll see both large and small boxes come out of here. And so just spinning those out fairly fast. I could do them way faster, but uh, might just bog down my machine a little bit. Uh, so just want to show a couple of properties you get out of using this. One is when stuff goes into Solace through that path through the Kafka receiver, it's at that point that it serializes all of those events, which means if it pulls from multiple topics, which is what's happening here, we have two topics going on. We have a single subscriber that's getting both of those topics. But if I have two different um, consumers that are subscribing to the same data out of Solace, I'm guaranteed to get the exact same temporal order of all the events from those two topics, or as many topics as I have. It's not always necessary, but one thing with Kafka is that Kafka consumers will subscribe to individual topics. The order of one consumer versus another consumer pulling from those two different topics is not really guaranteed. But in this case, you know, you can kind of see here, like they, they will always be the same order of what's coming out, like the red, green, whatever. And even ones that come almost simultaneously will show up, you know, one way or the other way for both of them. Um, the other thing you can do, if I move over here, which has a little bit of lag, um, is just showing how you can be way more selective of what you get from these events. If you were to subscribe to Kafka, you would get everything on a topic and the client could filter them out. You could say, all right, I only want half of this stuff and I'll use uh, headers or part of the payload or whatever to decide what I want and the rest will get thrown away. But for some applications, you know, specifically like this, where this is a mobile client that's going straight to the Solace broker, you may not want to waste bandwidth on anything that you don't exactly want. And in this case, I have a few examples here where uh, in the case of the red um, portal here, I'm subscribing to box star star red. That gives me everything, all, all different sizes um, of red. So if you see a big red or a small red come through here, uh, there's a small one and there's a big one, all of that comes through. The green one in, in, uh, or instead has just box small star green. So in this case, we only get uh, the green events. Sorry, every time I zoom, it kind of pauses the browsers. And on the bottom one, I actually went even more specific. So in that case, if you remember, the third level is actually the, the key. So this is the uh, partition key all the way from Kafka. That partition key, I set it up to be um, basically the number that you see here and here, that each one of these little boxes has an ID. I did that mod four. So I just get zero, one, two, three. This guy subscribed to zero. So every one that you come out of here, every one of these blue ones is a multiple of four and it only gets multiples of four. So, and it's, no one subscribes to orange and there's a bunch of orange ones. So in this case, we have really saved on bandwidth processing time, even complexity of your application potentially, where instead of getting everything from two topics, it can get a select uh, number of events from those two topics just by going through um, the Solace broker. So that was about all I wanted to show. Let me just turn this off from this. And so I don't know if you have any that's, comments that's on that. That's pretty cool. No, that's really cool. Uh, you know, what, I, what I'm excited about, especially bundling this with the broker, like how much time and effort it saves from a orchestration and provisioning point of view, and you just, you know, make the broker reliable or you you go with Solace Cloud, which is already, uh, already has baked in all of that stuff and uh, you're off to the races and you get these great capabilities, right? Like, no, not to worry about a, a connector piece to manage or anything like that. Exactly, yeah. You have to install the broker anyway, so why have all this other connector stuff that you have to have to manage and lifecycle and all of that, which I'm sure all of you that have done microservices understand the difficulty in. Uh, I just wanted to mention one other thing. I mean, this is showing the Kafka receiver. Of course, we can configure a Kafka sender, and that will subscribe to topics within the Solace routing domain and then serialize them out to a Kafka topic. And of course you can have multiple topics that you will publish to and within Kafka with different sets of subscriptions on them. So again, in both directions, you can get a, a very fine grained selection of the events that you want on those boundaries. <laughs>
you have you've built this whole event mesh. It has lots of brokers, lots of endpoints, data is flying all over the place. And of course, within that environment, things will perhaps go wrong, or at least maybe you're not getting the performance you expect. And you know, like it says here, it can be a bit of a black box. And within that context, you have a difficult time. It's one thing to manage the configuration of it, but it's a whole other thing to manage the day-to-day -day runtime of it. And so what we are introducing is distributed tracing. And distributed tracing is a great way to find where things have gone and measure the time it takes to go across the mesh, how long it takes end applications to acknowledge the messages, how quickly uh, or how long it takes to go through queues that are within the mesh. And all of this stuff plugs into the open telemetry framework. And so we have a uh, Solus customized receiver that plugs into the collector framework that allows you to get data from all of the Solus brokers and it also comes from all of our APIs over time and will get delivered to the collector, which will then be able to push it into whichever backend uh, event storage that you want. And within the brokers, you can very much, using the same uh, topic subscription uh, syntax that we have, decide what stuff gets um, traced. So you can just say, I want to just trace this one particular topic, or I want to do this group of topics and use wildcards for that. Uh, all of that's possible, and it will really make a big difference to understanding what's going on. One other thing I want to say is, like, it's taken us quite a long time, a lot of effort to build this because we want the tr it to be a source of truth. And so it's not just a matter of pushing logs out as messages or events go through the broker. What it has to do is transact everything. So we actually create as part of our guaranteed messaging infrastructure, guaranteed messages which represent the tracing information. And so you'll never get a case where a message is received and an event doesn't get sent out or vice versa, an event goes out and then we decide not to actually take and acknowledge the message that was published. You know, either of those two cases just leads to um, uncertainty of the data and makes it not as valuable for really tracing where problems are. So it's it's a lot of work for us, but we think there's great value in having it. So one more slide just sort of showing in a back end the kind of data that you might see, and you can drill down into this and get a lot of information about each event that went through the network. That's really cool, Ed. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited for distributed tracing. Can't come soon enough, as some of our customers say. Now, I've been building cloud native applications for years and years now, and I can tell you it gets complex. You know, you have all these uh, microservices firing on all cylinders and one thing goes wrong in the middle of that, you have no idea what's going on. And, you know, just putting that event broker in the middle, first of all, it has all the goodness of EDA, which we touched on today earlier, but at the same time, right away, getting visibility into what event goes where and what's happening if you need it, I think it's just magical. Yeah, and especially like one of these traces where you might have multiple hops of brokers in between the producer of the information and the consumer, and for some reason it's slow. Um, today, it's very difficult to properly understand why that's the case. With tracing, you'll be able to see, as you can kind of see here on the right, different time spans of how long it's spent on each hop. So you'll be able to see the originating application, was it slow for some reason? And then you can see for every hop through the network, is it, you know, how quickly does it go through there? And then you can see for the end application that eventually received the message and acknowledged it, how long did it take for that to happen? And if you have, like in most cases, a uh, horizontally scaling of your end applications where it's going to multiple of them, you might even be able to track down one or two of those that's slower than all the rest. So it really can, give the operator of the um, the whole infrastructure much more visibility and tooling to allow them to, to you know track down problems for their their end you know they're supporting these these uh, end applications and you know to go from someone complaining over the phone to you to getting an answer this is very quick and we're very excited to produce this so at this moment, we have um, an early EA that people can use if they would like. We're coming out with another EA soon, which has more uh, functionality to it. And we'll be adding more and more features to this as we go on through the rest of this calendar year and next. That's great. Looking forward to it. 
Yeah, and last uh, last slide here, call to action. If you're not part of Solus community, this is a community focused on developers. I encourage you to go join. Um, tons of good topics, tons of conversation and interactions on, you know, building your first EDA application to, you know, really detailed deep dive topics that people get involved in. So with that, I think it's a wrap for today. Um, I guess it wasn't too bad for our first session, Ed, was it? <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, so, uh, speaking you know, of looking that, forward give to... us some comments and yeah, feedback. I guess. Totally, totally. I, we wanted to make this easy and fun and and useful for people out there. And uh, for that to happen, we need feedback, of course. But uh, no, it was, it was good. I'm glad to do this with you, Ali. Yeah, same here. OK, well, have fun out there and stay in touch. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.